But this morning, I'm going to talk about the love of God. And this is the center of my teaching. And I hope that it becomes the center of your life too. That, you know, we all heard that for God so loved the world. But how much do we let that come into our life and affect us? It will show in your life. Let me tell you uh, the importance of love, you know, compares, comparing love and the law. You know, the God has two natures, His love and His righteousness, His holiness. Now, from His love, it comes the grace of God. And from His uh, holiness, it comes the law of God, the commandment of God. Now, both are needed, but the most important is the love of God. Now, since childhood, Sometimes we hear words of love. For instance, your mother might say, Oh, I love you, baby. I care about you. But you might find that words like that become lesser and lesser. Less and less people would, uh, you know, say positive words like that. And most times they'll say, Have you done it? You should do this. You haven't done it. And then when we grow up gradually, the law sticks in our mind. Now, when we become a Christian, we should be living in grace. But a lot of Christians are saying, Oh, I, I don't love God enough. I, I don't pray enough. I don't obey enough. I have sinned. And think about the law. Now, it's true, we should repent. But we should also have been motivated by the love of God so that we are changed. Now, imagine or think of the time when you first fell in love with someone. If it happened to you, when you were when you fell in love, you would be motivated to do different kind of things for that person, right? If you fell in love, and you would always think of that person with sweetness, because you find there is love. But sometimes after marriage, the love will go down because then uh, couples may start to demand, "You didn't do this. You had to do this." And, and demand things and so become law. But in a time of first falling in love, you notice that there is more love. That the other person may do something for you. And you might want to do something for that person, right? Mm -hmm. Do you remember those days? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Those days are sweeter, right? Mm -hmm. And then when you have that love, you're motivated to do a lot of things. Mm -hmm. Now with God, the same thing. Actually, the Bible has told us many things about the love of God. But yet, many people live in the law. Even though they know we are saved by grace. But it just stopped there. We are saved by grace. And then after that, you have to do this, you have to do that. Now it's true, we have to do those things. But if you do it like a slave, I have to do this. Now I am saved, but I have to do this, do that. Oh, a lot of hard work. Then it becomes a burden for you. And then there will be less joy. And how can I live? in peace and love and joy and freedom because I read the Bible and I notice that it's full of the love of God and when I'm soaked in the love of God all the time, I'm motivated to dedicate my life to God. I'm willing to die for God. I'm willing to go to places that are very difficult because I'm motivated by, love of, by the love of God. So it's very different. I don't find myself, oh, oh, oh hard work, oh, hard work. I find myself, hallelujah, no problem, hallelujah. So I, this morning, I was going to talk about the love of God. And I want to say different levels of entering God's love. And I hope you remember this. The first level is to know God's love. Say it with me. Know God's love. Know. Know God's love. You know God's love when you read the Bible, and you hear that God loves the world. And then the second level, believe in God's love. Say it. Believe in God's love. So you believe, yeah. Yes, God loves us. But many people believe. Do you believe in God's love? Yes. But then when someone is fired, then they say, Oh, I don't know if God loves me anymore. Or when people face difficulties, they say, Oh, God is not loving me. God is not treating me well. So the third level is to say, even in difficulties. So love God in difficulties. Would you say it? I'm sorry, I should reverse it. Believe in God's love in difficulties. Believe in God's love in difficulties. That because when we understand God's love and we know God is real, when we have experienced the work of God, and then we remember all the wonderful work of God, and then even when we suffer, 
even when we face persecution, that we know God still loves us. That's a higher level. And the fourth level is experience God's love. Say it. Experience, experience God's, God's love. love. You know, in your prayer, you experience peace. But when you go deeper and deeper in God and believe in God's love, gradually you can actually experience His joy and His love. Then you, anytime, you know, I think of one day if I'm persecuted or beaten for Jesus or even, you know, maybe put to death by, you know, by people who want to persecute me. And what I would do is I would say, God loves me and God remember all the things I do for Him and God is happy. It doesn't matter and I'll cry out to God and to ask God to give me the peace and the comfort in the midst of persecution or beating. And and then also I can ask God, Lord, and like Jesus, Lord, and, uh, Jesus said to the Father, Father, I commit my spirit to you. Take my spirit. So I'm ready for persecution. And I'm not afraid. I don't feel fear, even though the Bible does talk about <coughs> persecution. And I hope we're not afraid. We know that because we have eternal life. And we have eternal blessings. And people who are persecuted for Jesus and stand for our you know, I've remembered by God and blessed by God. So the fourth level is experience God's love. And the fifth level is enjoy God's love. Say it. Enjoy God's love. Now let me ask you, do you enjoy eating? Do you enjoy eating? I guess you all do. Think of it. Drink water. <sighs> Soothing, right? <laughs> That's expression of God's love. That God shows His love even in the quality of water. Yeah. It feels so good. Now, if water is always muddy, like muddy river, you still have to drink it. Yeah. <laughs> but water is so clear, doesn't have bad taste. You know, if water has, has bad taste and we live on water, we still have to drink the bad taste water, right? If the food has bad taste, we still have to eat the food. But the food has wonderful taste, right? It's the love of God. So you enjoy, enjoy God's love. Okay, and the sixth level, to have this intimate relationship in God's love. Um, I, I, let me put it in a simple way. That think of God's love intimately. Say it. Think of God's love intimately. Now, sometimes people say, for God so loved the world, but where is God? He's far away, but I don't see Him. Many people think of God like that. But for me, I always think of God next to me. The Bible says in Psalm 139, verse 5, He's encoursed me. He has, he has, he's in front of me and behind me, and He's laying His hand on me. So He's always on me, and he, I can experience Him. So there is an intimate relationship. Sometimes when people pray, they say, uh, thank you, God. But it's like speaking to the air. But we have to think of God standing in front of us. Oh, Jesus. Actually, it's now, of course, we don't have to think of an image. It, but it's better to think of, you know, Jesus personally. And you talk to Jesus. <clears throat> think of the Heavenly Father personally. And you talk to the Father like a person. I'm not saying you have to think of an image. But think of love with Him as a personal love, an intimate love. That way, uh, you will appreciate, Oh Lord, you helped me this time. You know, I, in three times I almost was killed. When, you know, when a car was on ice two times, and then one time, you know, that I was almost hitting another car. Not too far from me, and then at that time there was no way out. And I thought, that you know, both of us were going at very high speed. And I said to Jesus, I didn't know that. Now I have to come to you. But in the last moment, that car turned away because I had no way to turn. And I said, thank you, God. And I see that as a personal, intimate love of God. It's very personal. It's very real. And one time I pulled a garage door, and then I was caught. The three fingers hurt for a few months. If the strength had been a little stronger, I would have lost these 
three fingers. So when I look at them, I say, thank God, I have these three fingers. So I always think about the intimate love of God that I can experience Him like this. I hope when you experience the Holy Spirit or when you hurt someone experience the Holy Spirit, you say, that shows me God loves me intimately. So believe in God's intimate love. Say that. Believe in God's intimate love. And then number seven is motivated by God's love. Say it. Motivated by God's love. Then you say, I'm willing to do anything for God. So let's go through this again. Let's check yourself. Ask yourself, what level are you in? First is, no, I hear, I know God's love. Say it. No, God's love. Believe God's love. Believe God's love. Believe God's love in difficulties. Believe God's love in difficulties. Experience God's love. Experience God's love. Enjoy God's love. Enjoy God's love. Have intimate uh, in, um, to the intimate uh, intimate love with God. Uh, um, to believe in an intimate love of God. To believe in an intimate love of God or have an intimate love relationship with God. Have an intimate love relationship with God. Very personal, intimate, have an intimate love relationship with God. And then number seven, motivated by God's love. Hallelujah. Now, now I'm going to look at some Bible verses and also talk about our experiences, how we experience God. In Psalm 139, verse 5, that I, I just, you know, uh, read to you, that it says, You have enclosed me behind and before, and laid your hand upon me. And I put it, I paraphrase it, you are in front of me and behind me, and you lay your hand upon me. Now, so, you don't have to turn to it, because uh, it's better that you listen. It's, it's too hard to turn. But if you can remember, 139, verse 5. And for the next few days, if you bring a little notebook, you can write down my, the Bible verses. Now, here it talks about God serving us. He's in front of us and behind us and laying His hand on us and serving us all the time. Now I know that in Africa something unfortunate happened in the past that Americans and other people took many black people from Africa and then took them to be slaves. And then these people were really hurt when they were taken to America or some other places. And then when the master said to the slave, you have to do this, the master has to do it. And I, one time I watched a movie about slaves. Uh, it shows how slaves were uh, abused by the master. And you know, I see that because in the past I didn't know much about it. And also in textbook I read about how slaves were punished when they did something wrong. And the slave, when the master said, come, the slave has to come. But let me ask you this question. Is God our slave? He's not our slave. He's our master. But He serves us more than the way the slave serves the master. Because the slave will not be following the master all the time. The, the slave will not be serving happily. But God serves us all the time. Now actually, God can say, I've sent you Jesus. He died for you. I'm going to sleep in heaven and see, I've given you the Bible, you just obey it, you follow it, and then you can come to heaven. If, don't, if not, you cannot come to heaven. God can do that. God can just say, okay, I sleep in heaven, you just follow the Bible. <coughs> God can do that, right? But God did not do that. He chose to come to serve each person. Each person He serves personally. And in uh, Isaiah uh, chapter 30, it talks about, you will hear a voice saying to you, this is the right way. Whether you go to the right or left, you will hear a voice saying, this is the right way. Go in it. So, He will talk to each person. He knows you personally, and He guides you personally, and He's with you all the time. So when Psalm 23 verse 1 says that, He's, the Lord is my shepherd. It's talking about the Lord really guiding you all the time in each person. You might say, how can He do it to everybody? But He's God and He can do it. And you can, you can uh, experience that because every time when you pray, did God say, well, wait, take your turn. You are 1,001. Wait for your turn. Did God say that? No. He will come right away. He will come to bless you right away. And actually, before you pray, have you noticed 
when you sin, if you have a living relationship with God, when you sin, God keep moving in your heart. Touch your heart. Have you noticed that? That He keep moving in our heart. That is God working in our heart. He is very diligent. Our God is very diligent and very loving. And I hope you think about that. You know, I always have this uh, intimate love relationship with God. I always think of God's love. And that's how you can be filled with the Holy Spirit very powerfully. That you really believe, and it's fact, it's a fact. The Bible says that He's serving us all the time. He is talking to us all the time, guiding us all the time, moving in our heart all the time before we pray to Him. Actually, let me ask you, have Christians rejected <coughs> Jesus in different ways? Sometimes Jesus say, obey me, don't tell lies, don't be angry, forgive the person. Do you, uh, uh, do you obey right away? Very often we don't. Sometimes it even took years for some people to change, change a habit of lying or change a habit of being angry with someone. Sometimes it took a long time. So many times when God keep talking to us, many people just reject. Let me ask you, do you know a friend that you keep rejecting him and you say, I don't want you, I don't like you, don't come to me anymore. And you tell him many times and he still keep coming and loving you. Do you have a friend like that? <laughs> do you have a friend like that? <coughs> do you say to your friend, I don't want you anymore, go away. Yeah. If you say go away, what, do you, what will you do? <laughs> he will go away. But God, many times we reject and say, I don't want to obey you. I don't want follow your way and God still keep working in a way we can say God really you know um, in English how to, how to say that that he's willing to put down his face he's willing to put down his face millions and millions and trillions of times when he moved in people's heart and people rejected him and you know one thing God moved in my heart to, is to understand his heart the more you understand His heart, the more you'll be moved by Him. When we just know the Bible superficially, we don't understand God's heart. For instance, your mother, when your mother loves you, do something to you, you we should think about the heart, her heart and her preparation before she does something to us, right? So behind every action of hers, that she has done many things. Now, how many of you, of you here are parents? How many of you here are parents? Raise your hand. Okay? As parents, have you thought about your children all the time? What can I do for the child? Uh, what kind of education? How to take care of him? How, uh, uh, how about when he's sick? Do you think about him all the time? You have a lot of planning for him, right? So you might do one thing, but be behind that one action, you have many, many thoughts and preparation. Is that true? Yes. The same for God. Every action that you experience has many thoughts in God's heart and many preparation. For instance, when we were, were saved, God led many people to speak to you, to guide you. And then you came to Jesus, right? And in the right situation, He moved your heart so that you would you will, uh, uh, believe in Jesus. So when you think about how we believe in Jesus and also how we grew in Jesus, then you can think about the love of God in an intimate way. Now I hope when you hear this, you say, this is so wonderful. Let me ask you, if you happen to have a perfect spouse, now I haven't seen many perfect spouse. Actually, I really see my wife as someone who loves me so much. I haven't seen another woman who loves the husband so much and to be so gentle and so you know and so kind and so nice and considerate she's really is loving to me if you have a perfect spouse would you be very happy every day wow this spouse is really wonderful he's so he's or she is so nice to me I'm so thankful but let me ask you is God better than the best spouse on earth but so very often, people don't appreciate God that much. We don't think about His love that much. We don't think about the action behind His, his action, His heart behind the action, His preparation be, behind the action. So that's why we don't 
when many people are not motivated by the love of God and don't enjoy the, the work of God. And for me, whatever I see, I enjoy the work of God. When I see mothers, you know, in uh, Isaiah chapter 49, verse 15, it says, Can a mother forget the baby at her breast and have no compassion on the child she has born? Though she may forget, I will not forget you. That. Now, how many of you are mothers here? Have you forgotten your umbrella or something you bought or something you have or somewhere? Have you forgotten something somewhere? Have you forgotten your baby? And you say, oh, I forgot where I put my baby. Did I, did I leave the baby in a car, in a bus, or on a train, or in a shop, or in a church? Did you leave your baby in your church? <laughs> Then you will not forget your baby because God has put that heart of love into mothers. Hallelujah. Because God Himself has that love. You know what? I like to watch animal videos. And I, you know, I've, I've been to Nakuru National Park. I, like, I love to watch animals. And I saw the lioness lost the, the, uh, the cub. And then she would walk around for miles and. <laughs> keep searching and giving out the sound. And I saw one time also a leopard, a mother, and the, the, the baby died. And then the, the mother would cry for three days. Yeah. That it shows the love of animals for the children. Hallelujah. And crocodiles, the teeth are so sharp, but yet it can carry the baby crocodile in the mouth, and not just one, carry a whole bunch, and then take it to the water. Have you watched videos of that? Yeah. And then come back for more. It shows the tender love of the crocodiles and the animals. And crocodiles are not warm-blooded animals. <laughs> Cold-blooded animals. And when we see this, it all came from God's love. Amen. I hope you think of, when you think of God, He's full of love. When He is so full of love, let us really enjoy and experience His love and have an intimate love relationship with God to think of God's love intimately all the time and to appreciate His love and live in His love. And then I want to say something more is, you know, uh, I hear I talk about the grace of God and then the law of God, the grace of God, His love, and then the law of God, then we're motivated to follow God. When we talk, also pay attention to say words of grace. Instead of word of the law, we need to say words of law. But first grace, words of grace, like this. To your, to your students here, to your family members, you say, oh, you're precious, you're important. I care about you, I love you. You are important in the sight of God. If you say this to the children all the time, they feel loved. Okay, we need to also, you know, the word of the law had a, a few levels. The one level is, uh, you can say, let's. Let's pay attention. Let's uh, uh, listen. To, uh, to the Word of God. Let's obey God. Let's pray together. So one way. Uh, sometimes we give instruction. Do this. Do that. We have to do this. And, and then the next level, sometimes use, people use this. You did not do it. Have you noticed that? The law can be used in such a way. You did not do it. And then the, the, uh, the next level is accusation. You never do it. You are no good. Now these are all the law. Let me ask you, when people say things like, you are no good, you can never do anything good, does that help the person? No. So I would <coughs> encourage you, when we understand God's love, first say words of grace to us all the time. Amen. Jesus loves me. Every morning, say this. And all the time, Jesus loves me. Hallelujah. He cares about me. He loves me. He, he takes care of me. That way, you always encourage yourself with the words of grace from God. And then when you talk to people, try always to say, you know, I, I love you. God loves you. You are important. You are precious. That way, people will listen to you more. Don't think that you have to say, you are no good. You can do nothing well. You are, you are you're always too stupid. It's, it's not going to change them. But when you say words of grace, it will change people. Mm -hmm. Now you have to instruct people to what to do or listen, pay attention. It's okay. But when you say it, there are different ways to say it. You're going to say, listen. And listen, is it different? Very different. We don't have to say, listen. <laughs> Although you say, 
the student don't listen when I say it too gently. But sometimes I know that you have to use discipline. But I want to remind you that don't let the students always think of you as very stern, very strict, always negative, always demanding, always saying you're no good. But that they will remember you as a kind, loving teacher. So treat yourself like that. And in a church, I found too many people live in the law too always demanding. Instead, we can say God is full of love so we can enjoy Him and we can serve Him. And how you experience God, how you heard how some of you experienced God yesterday, you say God is so wonderful. It's so good we have a God like that. So I hope in your heart right now you say, Oh, God is so wonderful. God is so good. I love God. I can live in the love of God. A person living in love and a person living in law is very different. Can you see the freedom in me? The joy in me? Yes. Because I live in love all the time. I remind myself of God's love all the time. So I hope you do this every day. please. Okay, let's pray together. And I will first say the prayer of grace to let you understand the word of the prayer of grace and then you do this every day. Oh, Heavenly Father, thank you. You're loving us all the time. You're thinking about us all the time, much more than a mother thinking about a child. Lord, you always think about us, always remember us, and you're always serving us for eternity. You are not our slaves. Now, please listen to me, listen to me. Uh, uh, what I mean is in a prayer, if you pray together, then you don't miss my prayer. Okay? But into, get into the prayer, but listen to me. Oh, Lord Jesus, you're always <coughs> ministering to us always caring for us, always in, are always in front of us and behind us and laying your hand upon us. You're always blessing us. So we are blessed by you. We are loved by you and we are, we are very special. Please help us to live in your love, to be motivated by your love all the time. Lord Jesus, although some of us are suffering in some way, but yet when we count the blessings, how we experience God, we can say that yes, we are living in the grace of God and the love of God. And God has a wonderful plan in life to bless us more and more. Hallelujah. Praise you. Thank you. Hallelujah. Oh, Lord Jesus, help us to respond to you, to love you more, to think about your love all the time, to live in an intimate love relationship with you. Thank you, Father. Help us to think of your love in all your action, in your salvation, also when we experience you. Thank you, Father. We love you. We like you. We enjoy you. We appreciate you. It's so blessed to have you. Thank you, Father. You are better than anything that has happened to us. You are better than any person that we have met. Hallelujah. We want to appreciate you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Uh, I want to ask uh, if there is anyone here, you go home and you notice a difference. Can you share to encourage other people? Because the main thing is how you can keep the anointing of God. Have you noticed any difference when you go home or yesterday, the whole day? Anyone want to share and be courageous? Mm. You know, when God has done something good in your life, I hope you'll be courageous to share. Do not be afraid. Anyone? I think I want to share. Okay, yeah. great. Thank you. Thank Yesterday, you. I went to the church that they are visiting, my people church. Yes. I went at 5.30 and they were starting at 7, so you can imagine. Mm -hmm. I had one problem. I've had problems of my legs. Mm -hmm. Standing for a long time. And yesterday, I told God, I want a new day. Hallelujah. There's no way I would sleep without massaging my legs. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, the following day, it's so painful. And I love high shoes. But I couldn't wear them because of the feet. And yesterday morning, I, I mean last night, I didn't massage my legs. Yeah. And this morning I've woken up and I've taken my favorite shoes. Yeah. And I have to put on my If you notice, I've been wearing very low shoes. Yeah. I've actually been trying to get lower and lower, but that's not me. Mm. And I'm so excited this morning because he taught us how to call upon the Holy Spirit mm. to treat you in when I have very, what do you say, 
uh, cold, like feet, they are not hot, mm -hmm. and I can walk comfortably in my shoes. It's, it's been a problem. Yeah. And mm -hmm. not for yesterday, for many days. Oh, yesterday, man. I was blessed with that healing. And guess what they were doing? They were doing prison worship. I have never read prison worship anywhere. I don't even know how to sing. She's, remember I said she should wake up and come and sing, which she did. So yesterday was just awesome. Praise and worship, I mean, yeah. of all people, me. I don't even know that I have a voice for singing, but I got healed yesterday. Yeah. Yeah.